Hello everybody, this is Cameron Snow with Dynomics.com. Today we're going to be talking about water saturation. Water saturation is really the last step in our interpretation chain before we look at setting cutoffs and doing a sensitivity analysis in our workflow. Water saturation is an important calculation because it helps us understand if we'll be able to flow oil or gas from our reservoir and it's also a direct input to our volumetrics calculations. At this point, you should have already determined your clay volumes, performed your TOC analysis, and calculated your porosity. If you haven't done this and you're unfamiliar with those methods, uh, I would encourage you to go look at our previous videos as they cover how to do that step by step. So to perform our water saturation interpretation, there are a number of items that we'll need to know or that we'll make a decision on during the analysis. And these include things like the surface temperature and geothermal gradient our formation water resistivity, the M and N exponents from our saturation equations, and the saturation method that we'd like to use. There's a lot to cover, so let's uh, go ahead and get started. Today I'm going to be using Dynomics Petrophysics Insights Platform, but these methods are all published and the principles apply to any software package that you might use. So, uh, just re-familiarizing ourselves with the layout here in Dynomics. Uh, this is our water saturation module. And we have the well log panel here that go, covers our gamma ray, resistivity, and neutron density curves, the saturation, which we're calculating, and then the effective porosity in our bulk volume water shown here on the right hand side. Here at the uh, top left, we have our <clears throat> saturation uh, parameters table where we'll choose our saturation method set our formation water resistivity, our M and N values, and we'll also set our surface temperature and our geothermal gradient. And on the bottom left, we have our picket plot. And now the picket plot is one of the most powerful plots in petrophysics. It's very information rich and we can, uh, you know, use this to, um, to derive a number of the parameters that we use in our saturation calculation. And I'll cover how to do all that. But before I do, Let's really quickly jump to the basic structure of the Archie's equation. So this equation is uh, essentially shows us that, that our water saturation to the n power is equal to our formation water resistivity divided by our porosity to the m power times our deep resistivity. So keeping this structure in mind, let's jump back to the platform and take a look at the picket plot. So the picket plot can directly tell us, or directly reflects, each of these parameters. So, obviously we have our deep resistivity here on the x-axis. We have our porosity here on the y-axis. And then you'll see we have these four lines uh, sloping across the, the graph. These, core line, these lines correspond to uh, lines of constant saturation. So this represents 100%, 75%, 50%, and 25% water saturation. So essentially the way to think of it is any sand that falls uh, roughly on this line is a wet sand. Um, and then, you know, with, with that in mind, uh, what happens when we have something that is 100% saturation and 100% porosity? Well, that corresponds to our RW value. So that's, that's the value that goes in here. The slope of this line corresponds to our M value in Archie's equation. And the distance between these lines corresponds to the N value in Archie's equations. So you can see this is a very powerful plot. So we're going to focus on this quite a bit. Um, first of all, we need to set up the plot a little bit. What we want to do is we want to filter out, uh, let's say, areas that are of bad hole. And we also only want to look at reservoir quality rock. So we are going to um, remove areas that are high clay volume and that are uh, low porosity. So we do this using our typical uh, expression language in the dynamic software. <clears throat> and so once we've done that, we filter out that data. And, uh, and so for determining RW, um, as I mentioned, you know, what, what, what you want to do is you generally want to have these lines, uh, you know, have the 100% line fall on the left-hand side of your data trend. And we also want to, uh, 
you know, to to have it match the slope of our of our data. We we want it to be sub parallel uh, with respect to that. And so, you know, you can you can play around with the RW value and and see, you know, what what looks like a value that's that's probably too high where you're you know, where you have a lot of sands that are they're plotting on the wrong side of this 100% line. Um, you know, so you can you can play around with that and and look at different values different values there. Uh, obviously that was a was a typo um, there. Now you could say, oh, well, that, that looks fairly close. You know, maybe we could play with the M value. But what I would encourage you to do is actually to measure this from the lab. Uh, so you get a formation of your produced waters. And this is a very quick and inexpensive test for the lab to do. And I actually did that for this area, and they came back with an RW value of 0 0.15. So I'm going to enter that in. So now we have that. Uh, my surface temperature in this area, actually, I, I know that that is 70 degrees and my geothermal gradient. I looked at some bottom hole temperatures and I calculated that to be 1.25 degrees per 100 foot. So we've got those parameters set. And then that leaves us M and N. Now, the M and N values, we can get these from core. Uh, however, that test is often very time consuming and expensive. Uh, so you often don't have that data available. Uh, at least for the M exponent, you know, we can try to get some understanding from this from our picket plot. And what, what we want to do is we want these lines to be, like I said, roughly parallel with the trend of our data here. And so you'll notice I'm going to reduce my M value to about 1.9. And now we see that it really starts to make all these lines parallel to our data here. And so that's a, a good sign that we've got this interpretation correct. Um, <clears throat> you know, M, M and M values, they can vary by formation, as can your uh, RW. Um, so, of course, in the software, you can go through and you can look at this on a zone-by-zone -zone basis. Uh, so, let's say we're just interested in, you know, like maybe our middle uh, and lower Alston chalk. So, if we're just interested in those, you know, that's how our, how our trend looks. You know, if we're look, interested in adding in you know, our Eagleford as a formation of interest, uh, we can also, we can also do that. So, so it's really up to you how many zones you want to look at at once here. But in general, uh, this is the basic theory behind doing your water saturation calculation. Now, <clears throat> of course, you know, I haven't mentioned the method. Uh, the method is a combination of personal preference and style and a little bit of knowledge about your reservoir. So, uh, personally, I often find myself going with the Archie and Archie FeeT methods. However, if you know you have a Shaley sand, we do have those models available. So we have the Semendu, modified Semendu, and Indonesian methods available to you. And so if you prefer using one of those, uh, of course, you can, you can always choose to do so. So uh, that is a quick look at how to do a saturation interpretation. Um, I hope that was useful to you. If you have any questions, you can feel free to reach out to me at csnow at dynomics.com. And uh, I look forward to talking with you some more in our next video. Thank you.